In today's video, I'm going to be doing a product review on bare conductive electric paint. Now the paint that you see here, I picked up at Radio Shack. I was in there the other day looking for some project boxes and I came across this paint on the shelf. Now in the past I've used other conductive paints such as Circuit Works, which is more of a silver based paint and I have had very good results with it. So I figured let me give this one a try, so I purchased it. Now when you read the package, it states on the back, electrically conductive paint works great on many materials including paper, plastic, textiles, and conventional electronics. Bareconductive.com is the website. And it says to use within six months of opening. Now I looked into it and pretty much what this is, is an acrylic paint, a special acrylic paint, with more than likely carbon, very fine like micronized powdered carbon added to the paint or possibly graphite to make it a conductive paint. It applies just like a pen like that and I can go you can make your little trace if you want. Goes on nicely. The good thing about this it is a water-based paint so it is easy to clean up even after it dries it's easy to clean up. Now the relative humidity right now is around 55 percent. This does not take too long to dry, but I already prepared other pieces of paper with the conductive paint on it so we don't have to wait for this to dry. The longer you wait for this to dry, as this dries, the conductivity increases. So when it's wet, it's lower. When it's dry, it's higher. Over here what I did is I put a thin line and I just dragged my finger over it to flatten it out. I'm going to show you when you apply it thinner and when you apply it thicker. Now according to the manufacturer, it states you can use this like a wire or solder and you can also use it for PCB repairs and that is exactly what drew my interest into purchasing this product. I'm going to take my digital meter, let me push this to the side there like that. I'm going to put this down to the 2K setting, 2000 ohms, and we're going to check the line to see if it's conductive. And you can see it's 65 ohms. If I get really, really close, 70. really really close I can get it down to around 50 on a thin line like this. Now the thicker you make the paint coating on the paper or whatever else you're going to coat the better it will conduct. So if this is a thicker line which I'm going to show you in a minute I can get much closer and have a lower resistance. Now the one thing that I didn't like when I purchased this product was the fact that they do not state anywhere on the product information about this being a resistive paint. It's not, the way it's worded it makes it sound like you paint this whole line like you see here and then you check it between here and here and you're going to see zero ohms or maybe two ohms but that's not the case. It was a little misleading to me and the product is as they say conductive but they're not telling you that it's resistive. They're just telling you it's conductive. So in your mind, you're going to think it's just like copper, solder, or silver, that the resistance is going to be very low, when in fact that's not the case. As you saw, the resistance across this line, if I check there and here, is 660 ohms, which is pretty high. Once I saw that the resistance is that high, even when you place the test probes very, very close, let me let them touch first and then back off, you can see it shows 17 ohms, 40 ohms. The resistance, even at the closest, is a minimum of around 5 or 10 ohms. And a lot of the times when you're repairing circuit boards, like you see right here, you're not going to want to have any resistance in a broken trace. So for instance, say this trace right here is burned, all right? Or it has a split in it, a hairline crack from heating and cooling over the years. The, the trace cracked. If the trace cracked, you could just take a utility knife blade, gently scrape away the coating over the trace, and what I would normally do, which is the best, would be to apply a little bit of flux and solder the bridge across. 
If it's a wide enough gap, what I would do is put a bead of solder here, a bead of solder there, and lay some bus wire across, or I could take some enamel wire and clean off the insulation, and I can bridge that gap, and it will be as good as new. But according to the product description, it's saying you could repair PCB traces, and I don't see that working too well, except if you're going to be using a trace leading to the base of a transistor. Most of the time, the resistor leading to that transistor is going to be a very high value in the thousands of ohms. So adding an extra 10, 20, or even a few hundred ohms is not going to really affect the operation of the circuit. But if you're using a connection like here, which is handling current, this right here is just a filter board out of a microwave oven just to show you the traces. You would not want to use that here because it's going to generate resistance even if that's a slight little opening. And what may happen is that material may begin to heat up and possibly catch on fire. We're going to check that in a minute to see what the flammability is of the material. But really it's only useful in certain areas on PC boards. The way the paint is described is that you can use it on PC boards when in reality you should only be using it in certain areas where the traces are handling very low current and already have high value resistors on them due to the fact that the paint has resistive qualities. Now over here, let me move this one away. This I put on very thick and I allowed it to dry about two hours and like I said the humidity here is around 55 percent. It's definitely dry, fully dry and you can see as it dried it shrunk and it pulled the paper making marks in it. So It's definitely fully dry. This one here is straight out of this bottle, straight out of here. And this one here was me experimenting by adding some powdered silver or some very fine silver filings just at the top here where it's round to see if I could increase the conductivity. So let's take a look. All right, so I'm going to touch here. All right, so I'm about 3 16 to a quarter of an inch apart between the probes. And I'm getting around 65 ohms. I'll bring it closer. Dropping, getting lower and lower. Let me go from here to here. 80. Now let's go from, let's go from where this one would be the top, which is right there, to the bottom. 345, and as you go up, see it dropping. So it's resistive material. When they say it's just like a wire or just like solder, that's not the case. It's just like a resistive wire, and it's definitely not like solder. Now if I go over to here, this has silver added to the paint. So you saw over here we had about a quarter of an inch apart, 67 ohms. This has silver in it. See how much lower? 20 something. So this is very, very good. I'm surprised that they don't add powdered silver into the paint to increase the conductivity to make it more useful. Now for me, most of the times if I repair a circuit board, it's going to be, as I said earlier, I'm going to scrape the trace, flux it, and solder it, and just bridge it across, or layer a wire in there, and solder that. But if I can get a material just like this that has increased conductivity and much lower resistance, then I would have no problem cleaning this area and just taking the tip off and applying it over the trace once the bare copper is exposed like that and allow it to dry. This is very neat for kids especially. So this product does have some uses as far as I'm concerned. If kids are learning electronics, they could draw up a whole bunch of things. They could take, let me move this out of the way. You could take a button cell. This is a three volt button cell. I could lay it right on there. And of course, I don't have to use a resistor in series because that's 3.2 volts. And not to mention all this extra resistance is going to be reducing the output of the LED. So let me show you the LED first. Very, very bright. All right, blue. Now lay that there. 
And let me get this set up so it, it'll angle towards the camera. Take a look. All right, so it is lighting. Let me angle it more so you can get an idea of the brightness. It's definitely reduced brightness due to the resistive quality of the paint. See right there. But it does work. So you could draw a whole circuit up, and then you could even make switches by taking paper like this, and then you could lay it across there and there, push down, and you could use it to turn an LED on and off. All right, so this is the negative. Let's stretch that way out. And it just barely, barely makes it. Yep. All right. So you see it lighting? So it is neat. It does have purposes. And it, it is conductive as they said it is. They're not mentioning that it's resistive. And honestly, I probably would not have made this purchase knowing that it's resistive like it is. In my mind, I thought it was like the circuit writing pen which is very, very low resistance. It's like under an ohm per millimeter. It's very, very low. A good quality to this paint is that once it's applied, it's easy to clean up, and you can also clean it off of a board like this. I put it on here so you get an idea how it would be on a PCB. Let me get my finger wet. And let's see how it is. You see, it does come off fairly easy. That's a good thing if you're going to clean yourself, but it's not exactly a great thing if you're going to want to prevent it from coming off on the board. So the best thing to do is you would take your PC board after that's applied and fully dried, and you would just apply a layer of clear nail polish over that area to prevent any water from washing that area away. It'll also protect the areas of the circuit board where you sanded or scraped away as well. What I'm going to do now is check the flammability of this material. I'm going to place a flame right under the end and see what happens. And all you can see is turning red, but it's not igniting. It won't even take a flame, nothing. And as you can see, it's not flammable at all. So the worst case scenario, even if this was on a circuit board and too much current went through it, this would get hot and possibly the board would get damaged and this would not burn. Pretty good. So the bottom line with this paint is, it is good paint. It applies nicely. It's easy to clean up. The only complaint that I have regarding this paint is that they should have mentioned on the packaging very clearly that it is resistive. So people don't think that they just put a line down and you have a zero or near zero resistance connection using this paint. That's what I thought it was and, and unfortunately it was not. If you're looking for a conductive paint and you don't mind that it's resistive, you can use it for certain areas of the circuit boards as I mentioned earlier. It's also very handy for kids if they want to learn how to draw up little circuits using a watch battery and LED and making switches out of paper like I showed you earlier. It's also good for that. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.